Does the Unified Network Server require a cloud connection to operate? Well, too long didn't watch, the answer is no, but you may want to use it for certain scenarios. What about if you had one of these cloud keys? If this is a device from Unify, doesn't it force you registration to the cloud and then also require that connection to be consistent? Actually, no. Again, there was a brief period in time where they did have a registration for some of their devices, such as the cloud key. They have since removed it. Uh, but this one I to talk about today is the current status here, November 2024 of the Unified Network Server, what the requirements are of getting started and which devices have support for it, and some of the scenarios, such as running your own self-hosted controller for multi-site management without using your cloud, and of course, solutions for using it with their cloud and how that works and how the devices talk to it. So let's get started. Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structure cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that'll get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now, the first way to get started with Unify is going to be to download their network server right from their site. It's free, there's no registration or anything required. You can run this on Windows, Mac, or Linux. I've actually never tried it on Mac. On Windows, yes, it'll work, but I seem to find people that having a lot of problems with it on Windows, not necessarily because of Windows, but because of other security tool, AV software, or sometimes a misunderstanding of the firewall settings on there. Linux servers are definitely my preferred way to run this. I feel it just runs a lot smoother on that, but you decide what works for you. And if you're just testing it out, you can move between them because the backup file it creates will allow you to export and migrate. So if you just are testing and want to start on Windows, no problem, and migrate to a Linux server or one of their devices later, yeah, that's an absolutely easy thing to do. They do support migrations from one controller to another. Now, as far as setting up the Linux instance, I have a dedicated video. You'll find a link down below or at this short URL, lawrence.video slash unify dash self-hosted. It's a quick script that'll get you up and running in about five minutes or even less for setting up a controller on an existing Linux server. Requirements are actually pretty lightweight to get started, but if you do have several thousand devices in Unify, you may want to beef up that server accordingly. Goes out of scope of this video, but easy way to get started. That video is linked down below. Now, the options are the network controller on a Linux local server or Windows, but like I said, I prefer Linux. And this will automatically discover other devices you plug in the network adjacent to it and you can adopt them. You can also put the network controller in the cloud somewhere with whatever hosting provider you may have. And this option works great, except the local devices won't know where it is. So you'll have to use something like DHCP option 43 to tell the devices where it is, or you can SSH into each Unify switch or access point and say, hey, this is where you need to go to get adopted. This is where the controller lives. That works fine for external controllers. I also do have a video link down below for how to set up option 43. Then you have the devices that are routers with the controller built in, such as a Cloud Gateway Max and a UDM Pro. There's a variety of these on there and they have the controller built right in. So they're a firewall, plus they're the controller that will control the devices. So once you plug the devices in, local discovery kicks in and they will find and adopt all those devices and they can be joined there. Then they have the Cloud Key. The Cloud Key is a device where you can host the controller on it and it sets it up automatically. It comes out of the box that way. You just go through and next and yes. And no, you don't need a cloud for any of these. It's not required, as I said. You can, and we'll talk about that in a moment, adopt them to their site manager, but they can all be set up and the Unified Cloud Key works with the other devices such as access points and switches, but it only works with very specific firewalls such as the UXG. If any of these devices, such as a Cloud Gateway Max or the UDM Pro with the built-in controller. If the controller is built in, the firewall will adopt automatically to that controller. That's an important nuance to remember, and I'll talk a little bit more about it later, but you can't adopt a UDM Pro to your Linux network controller, whether it's in the cloud or local, doesn't matter. If the device comes with a built-in controller here in 2024, that's the hardware controller it will adopt to automatically for the firewall. 
Now, this is that cloud request from required and want to explain how it works. All of these are capable of connecting to the cloud and the Unify Site Manager. You don't have to do it. You just log in with a local account when you set them up and say, I don't want to connect to the cloud. It'll work. But the advantage of doing it is it brings all of these to the multi-site manager. And it's also important to understand how this works. So when any of these devices and you register them with the site management tool, you can register many of them in there so you can have one dashboard with all your different sites in there. Now, the way the Unify Site Manager works, you have credential login, two-factor and everything supported. So they've done you know good job on security for getting in there. But when you join to the site manager, those credentials then activate a key that allows you to go into the site manager and then get to any of these devices. You don't have to set up any port forwards. They are all talking to the Unify cloud. So this gives you a portal that is protected by two-factor authentication that allows you to admin these devices with ease, even if they're all remote sites. So you don't have to do any configuration on those remote sites to be able to get back to the controller. It's a big advantage of it. And we'll talk about some more advantages here in a few slides. Now, when you're getting started, whether you have one switch or one AP, Unify does not put on these devices any type of web interface. They need the controller to work, whether it's your network controller, uh, Linux server that you've got running locally, or you get a cloud key, that is a minimum requirement to get started with Unify. So you can't just go pick up an AP and expect it to work and have all the same functionality unless you have one of these devices and the same with the switches. I mean, switch functions, you just won't get all the fancy VLAN management or any of that unless you get it configured with the cloud key. That's what turns on all that functionality to go through and make the Unify work the way it does. Now, if you're looking at a single site, and this is a scenario that's pretty common, maybe you have a UDM Pro, you bought a Unify switch and you got a Unify access point, or maybe you have a whole lot of them. When you're looking at the UDM Pro versus like the Gateway Max, there are differences in the quantity of devices that can be attached. It's a lot more for the UDM Pros and it's a lot less for smaller devices like the Gateway Max. Check the specs so you know you don't buy too many access points and can fit on one of those controllers. But let's walk through our scenario here for site A and you can completely set it up independent, or once again, we can tie it to the Unify Site Manager. And let's go a little further. What if we had Site A, Site B, Site C, and we tied them all to the Site Manager? This is where you get some advantages, and the cloud controller system that they use, the Site Manager, still is talking to each individual. So the control plane is actually on Site A, Site B, Site C, running on that UDM. It's just talking to the Site Manager. One of the things that this allows you to do is you can set up VPNs independently on these, but what if you wanted to just click some buttons and have the VPN work together automatically? Well, this is where some of the Unify tooling comes in to really make this more convenient. And one of the popular reasons for using their Unify Site Manager is so you can say, hey, just tie these together because the Site Manager knows where the location is and can manage and keep that up to date for you. So if IP addresses change, but you want the VPN to stay consistent. Now the VPN is being coordinated by the Site Manager, but it's not passing through it. The way Unify works is it's just telling Site A to talk to Site C, for example, and and it's just keeping track to make sure they know where they are, but it's not routing the traffic through Unify because that's not an ideal way to do it. Uh, you don't want it bouncing through their cloud and back. That would create latency and a lot more bandwidth uses. So this is a good reason to use the cloud manager and a one big advantage. But if you're wondering, well, do I get to set up VPNs manually? Yeah, absolutely. If you didn't want the site manager and you wanted these each individual sites where you've come up with your own VPN to log in or remotely administer them, and you want to put the IP addresses in and set up the VPNs manually, absolutely, you can still do that. A Unify lets you do it either way. Just one of the things I want to make very clear, you're not losing functionality exactly in terms of VPN, but you're losing some of the automation that will come with the Unify Site Manager. Now, what about self-hosted multi-site? I've got a whole video on this. And before we get to that, let's talk about how that works. You can't do that with a UDM Pro. Back to what I had said earlier, when you have a unified device that has a built-in controller, the firewall is going to automatically adopt to it. And you could be awkward and run the firewall, have it adopted to itself, and then have the switch and the access points adopt to your controller, but that would be weird. And I don't really recommend that particular scenario because uh, now you've got to manage things in kind of an awkward way. So if you want to run your own self-hosted multi-site, the ideal way to do it is to buy a UXG gateway if you want to go with the Unify firewall, then you can adopt all those devices devices at site A, the gateway, the switches, and the access points. But also, and we have a lot of clients set up like this, we have our own self-hosted controller, not tied to their multi-site cloud. Uh, we have some sites that just have 
access points and switches and any combination, no problem. It's going on my self-hosted controller. Or you can have a site where they already have their own switches, they have their own firewall, but they do like the Unify APs and you can have those by themselves because the Unify access points don't require Unify switches to work. As long as you have a proper switch doing the proper PoE for that model you have, they'll work perfectly fine. And finally, if you wanna know how to set up a self-hosted multi-site controller, even though this is with a slightly older version, the steps are still the same for building it out and setting it up and getting DNS right, which is an important aspect of it if you wanna build multi-site controllers or properly can be done by AP. I cover that in this video. You'll find this short link down below as well. I wanna address a few questions that frequently come up. The first one is really simple. Why do we need a network server to manage all of these? Well, the Unified Network Server is probably a bit cumbersome if you only have one unified device, but rarely do you have just one device. Matter of fact, when we have like 300 access points at a client, we need to update an SSID and I don't wanna update 300 access points. And individually, you want to use the control plane to change it once and push the change out. Same thing goes for switches or defining VLANs, et cetera, or even firmware updates. Another question that comes up is, does the controller have to be running all the time? So no, the unified network server controller does not need to run all the time. It is preferred because that's where all the statistics gather, but if it goes down or you have to shut it down to do an update or load a new version, not a big deal. These systems will work in the last known good state and they will continue to do their job. The SSID will still broadcast. These switches will still have all their port configurations until a new configuration change is made from that unified network server controller and pushed back out. The third one is what about the cloud? If I've tied it to and got all the conveniences of using the unified network site manager and uh, what happens if that goes down? Well, no big deal. If it goes down, it would be inconvenient, but your local user credentials can still log into the devices. So your external access may be broken if for some reason that site manager is down, but locally you can still have a plan B and manage each one of the devices. And once again, because the control plane is controlled on the controller, even if for some reason our site manager is not available, you would still be able to change and configure and all the statistics are still being gathered locally on those controllers. So you're not really missing out on much other than some of the annoyance because usually you notice it being down because you were trying to log in and get right to something specific. If you have any other questions, leave them down in the comments below. Like and subscribe to see more content from this channel. And if you want a more in-depth discussion and we can have in the comments and really dive into some scenarios, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com. Love to see you there. There's been so much good community there. A lot of discussion around this and well, any other topic that I have on my channel. I'll see you over in the forums and thanks.